So here we are. Let me bring this out to full screen. Okay, say hi. I'll get you something to drink. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Good morning on this fine Sunday morning. It is a snowy Sunday morning, and we are at the fourth Sunday of Pentecost. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> please forgive me. We are at the fourth Sunday after uh, Epiphany, January 31st, 2021. Let us get going now and begin our call to worship. Join with me now for call to worship. Come, let us give thanks to the Lord with our whole hearts. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Glory be to the one whose wonders are remembered. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Lord feeds the righteous with truth. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come, let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our announcements on this morning are our regular announcements on Tuesday evenings, we continue to have our prayer calls with myself at 7 p.m. And we have uh, gotten back into the book of, um, with Dr. Weaver, Meditate Like Jesus. So come join us. All you have to do is contact me and I'll make sure that you get on the call. And uh, if you'd like to uh, join uh, the Wednesday evening Bible study. It is, of course, run by uh, Dave Schmoyer, and uh, Dave would most like uh, would very much like to help you get on to that Wednesday evening Bible study. And this Wednesday evening is a really good time to start the Bible study because we will begin at the very uh, beginning of the book of Revelation. We won't even, well, possibly we will get into the first chapter, but we're going to begin and um, look at some details about Revelation first. So we'll, we're beginning Revelation on this coming Wednesday. So it's a good time to uh, contact Dave and, and see if you'd like to, to join in on our Wednesday evening Bible study. We really do have a good holy time there. Okay, and of course, uh, Carnegie and Spencer have already begun their in-person worships on uh, two Sundays ago on January 17th. Fairhaven will begin in-person worship coming up on next Sunday. Already, it's going to be February 7th. So Fairhaven has determined that um, they will open for in-person person worship on February 17th. And Hilltop, by the... Um, Council and um, pastors and everything are still discerning when uh, is a good time to open, but it will likely be very soon that our Hilltop Partnership Church will open. So those are the announcements for today. Let us move on in our Sunday worship today with our prelude. Thank God for uh, Craig Davis, who will um, give us a rendition on this morning. How do I get it to go? Craig.
Let's try that again. This time I'll let you know that I've got myself up in the corner. I've got myself up in the corner. Yes. And so we do thank Greg Craig Davis for that rendition of Take My Life, Lord, and Let It Be. Amen. Truly, when the Lord takes our lives, we can be joyous in the fact that the Lord is taking it over wholly and completely and letting it be in our Lord and our God. We can move on now. I'm getting there. There we go. To our opening prayer. Join with me now. Almighty God, light from light, who commands the universe and all that is made. Your word is the power that makes whole what is broken, the force of good and the food of peace. Teach us now as you taught in the synagogue. Heal us now so that in all we say and do, the freedom we have in you may be for others too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let us enjoy our opening hymn, Silence, Frenzied, Unclean Spirit.
Our psalm reading on this morning is uh, from, our, from Psalm 111. Praise for God's wonderful works. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in him, full of honor and majesty. And his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to, to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his covenant forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Join with me now in confession of sin. Holy and all powerful God, who commands all spirits, comforts those in distress and casts out demons and destructive forces. We confess that we are unable to do your will. We protect what is familiar and reject what is unknown. We admire those with courage, but excuse ourselves when we falter from the truth. We forget that you are always with us and that you always, and that you are all things, excuse me, and that with you all things are possible. Forgive us, lead us, make us new. Remove our desire to heed false prophets and show us your way. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God and mother of us all, amen. Hear the words of the Lord. The God who knows you and knows every thought, hears you and now forgives you all your sin. You have been redeemed through Jesus Christ, God's son, our savior, who is alpha and omega, all in all. Let us bring forth now the prayers of the people. Those that I have in front of me right now are um, one of a, a good report from Fairhaven. We have good news that Jane Henney, that is Rick and Kathy Spicer's aunt, um, has rebounded and is doing much better. She was moved this week out of the ICU and um, is in a step down unit. 
just on this past Friday, the 29th, and she was transported to Juniper Village in State College. So she's in that senior living continuum care. So we praise God for, for her step up in uh, her condition. And then we do have a concern from Hilltop. Um, Betty Lou Miller, who has been in a nursing home for some time now, just on this Friday, the 29th, had to be moved to Grove uh, Nursing Home. And that would be exactly in Washington, PA at 1198 West Whitey Avenue. We can get the exact address, uh, address to you if you want to uh, mail something to her. Uh, and so although they have been trying, they've, they have been getting her up, she has signed it, is finding it really hard. And in fact, she's not able at all to take steps and walk. And this is a big concern for her daughter, um, Judy. And also Judy, Judy is frustrated over the fact that she can't, and understandably so, she can't go in and see her mother and she can't either actually communicate with her mother over the telephone. So we need to take care to pray over those concerns for Judy and to pray for Betty Lou. Okay, so let's see what else we might do. We have anything at all uh, online that is a prayer concern immediate right now. I'm not seeing, we do have some folks watching, but I'm not. Okay, that's not nice. Seeing anything online. All right. Let me see comments. Okay. If we have nothing more, we certainly can this is pray for, uh, Betty Lou and let's see, Susan Reeves. We have my, um, okay, well, it looks like we have a joy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. We have a joy. We have a joy from um, Susan Reed that her mother celebrated her 93rd birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, her daughter in law has. Oh, that's wonderful, fully recovered from COVID. And then there are some concerns, prayers for the uh, Mola Narrow family uh, at the death of Chris and the Arrington family for death of Della. Let's see. Okay, so let's see. Mola Narrow family. And Chris Errington and Della. And then we have the joy of uh, her 93rd birthday. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else. Let's see if there's anything That's else. Okay. That's all. So I'll take it back over to here. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you will um, join me now, let us entreat our Lord in prayer. Father, our dear God, we do thank you on today that we may come to you. We thank you that you are always there, ever present, and ever accessible to us, always watching over us, always uh, ready to answer prayer for us, always ready to speak to us, always ready to fellowship with us, always ready to be our friend, always ready to listen to us. And uh, so therefore, Lord, Lord God, we thank you on today that we do have joys and answered prayer to lift up before, we, before you. We thank you, Lord, for Jane Haney's progress. And, and we thank you, Lord, for the blessing of life in Susan Reed's mom. 
um, that she's able to, to celebrate her 93rd birthday. We ask that she have a joyous time, that uh, her entire family get together and, and celebrate her life and each and every year of it. We um, ask you, Lord, that you would come into our hearts and ease our hearts over several concerns as well. As we lift up and pray for these people, um, we lay them before your throne of grace. We ask you, Lord, to um, ease the heart of Judy, Betty Lou's daughter, as she is frustrated over not being able to communicate with her, her mom being in the nursing home and she has no way of seeing her or even talking to her on the telephone because there's a problem with her hearing, Lord. We ask that you would just uh, bless her in comfort, her in patience that, that, um, that waiting for the time when they can do it. And we ask that, that, that you would um, possibly even get the nursing home um, uh, um, managers to, to, to give them the wherewithal and the resources to try to get them to be able to get them together in some way with some type of a barrier between them that they could see one another. And, and that I've heard of even hugging walls, Lord God, help them to get together, to be together and, and be able to communicate, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray for that blessing upon the, their lives. Lord, I ask that you would comfort these families who have lost loved ones. We know, Jesus, that you are more than enough in these cases. Death is such a, a familiar case in our lives. It is as much a part of uh, life as living is, but we ask that you would bless them, the Molinera family in the death of Chris, and we ask that you would bless the Arrington family, Lord God, in the bless, uh, in the death of, of Della. And Lord, we come to you now praying also in the same form and fashion that you taught um, your disciples in Jesus Christ to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our scripture lesson for today as we move on in our service is the Old Testament lesson, Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 20. And we'll move on from there to the gospel lesson of Mark, uh, chapter 1, 21 through 28. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 20. A new prophet like Mo Moses. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet. Like me from among your own people, you shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. 
I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words of that prophet shall speak in my name and myself will hold accountable. But my prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. You may say to yourself, how can we recognize a word that the Lord has not spoken? If a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, but the thing does not take place or prove true, it is not the word of the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Do not be frightened by it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now the gospel message. Mark 1, verses 21 through 28. The man with an unclean spirit. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed and they kept on asking one another, what is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And now our sermon. Our sermon title for today is Receive Jesus, Amazing Teaching. If you will pray with me now. Lord our God, again on today, we do thank you for your gospel. We thank you, oh God, that we can ask that you touch my lips with a cleansing coal. We can ask, Lord God, that you touch my lips, that I bring forth only your word of truth, sanctified and complete. And we thank you, Lord, that we can ask for your riches in glory, asking that you strengthen each and every one of us within the hearing of my voice with power of your Holy Spirit, strengthen each and every one within ourselves such that Jesus Christ will dwell in our hearts through faith. We pray, Lord, to be rooted and grounded in your special love, that love that is like none other, that agape love, that we may have an understanding of the depth of that love, the breadth, the length, the height of that love, Lord God, that passes all natural human understanding. But by being filled, Lord God, with the fullness of you, we can at least have an inkling of understanding concerning the love that you have for each one of us and for each one in the world, which you bring forth even now. 
within the word of truth in your gospel. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so um, what stands out in this passage of scripture in Mark uh, verses uh, 21 through 28, that uh, demon that is exercised out of um, the, young, the, the man in the synagogue, that unclean spirit, is the power that Jesus operates in within the indwelling spirit of, of um, the Holy Spirit within Jesus. Uh, a few verses above this passage, Jesus is tempted by Satan in the wilderness. And we see that Jesus overcomes that easily. He overcomes Satan himself. And so it is and we find out also in that those few verses that it's actually the Holy Spirit that drove him out into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. So then it is the Holy Spirit of power himself that, that takes authority over the devil. And it is the Holy Spirit indwelling in Jesus that is the power that teaches in the synagogue in this passage. And it's the Holy Spirit of uh, power in Jesus that casts out the demon in the possessed man in that synagogue. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, showing himself brilliantly clear, illuminating in presence, contrasting with the company of such a murky and obscure evil demon that no doubt recognizes Jesus as the Holy One of God that recognizes him most certainly because there's such a contrast in who they are. He says to him, you are the Holy One of God. I know who you are. Have you come to destroy us? And he says us, us meaning the entire regimen of the principalities and rulers and spiritual wickedness down to the lowly imps that have been set up by Satan, the whole of Satan's army. Have you come to destroy us. And we find out, yes, in scripture, the very purpose that Jesus came was to destroy the works of the devil. And he has. And all those across the entire earth who have received our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this, this demon being called out by Jesus knows full well that he's doomed. He knows that the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in Christ will in destroy the entire dominion of evil across the earth that it has fallen. In verse 22, we read, they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. Jesus has authority, not only to cast out demons, not only that power to do that, not only that authority to cast out demons, but Jesus has authority and power to teach the word of God. Jesus teaches also in verse 15, just above in this very same chapter, he says that the time is fulfilled. Glory, hallelujah. This is the gospel. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And in John 3, Jesus proclaims, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah, 
life everlasting. For God sent his son not into the world, not into the world to condemn the world. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have life. That the world through him might be saved. Glory, hallelujah. So receive Jesus' amazing teaching all through the gospels. Receive Jesus' amazing teaching in the power and authority of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying, come to me. I'll, I'll set you free. I'll allow you to live a life that is in victory. I, I have the power over the works of the devil. Evil will have no more dominion in your life. Jesus is saying, if you will, but give me your life and live godly, your life will be made profitable. Godly living is profitable for this life, but not only for this life, but for the life to come. That life that is promised everlasting in my name, Jesus is saying. Only receive my teaching. My teaching has power. Come rest in me. Trust in me. Jesus is saying, I will never leave you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. If you feel restless, In these uncertain times, if you feel impatient in these uncertain times, if you feel insecure in these uncertain times, we have a vaccine, yes, but we have uncertain availability. We have a vaccine, yes, but we yet do have uncertain effectiveness to various different strains arising. You can have security in Jesus Christ. Set your life secure in Christ Jesus. Make your calling and election sure. Now, beyond your initial salvation, there is more, much, much more. This life of living in Christ is an exciting life on this side of heaven. Jesus gives us gifts of grace to use in his service. It's an exciting life. We can use these gifts within the Holy Spirit power, that same Holy Spirit power in authority that Jesus has in his service. Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so he sends us with all authority that has been given him in heaven and in earth. And therefore, we go in his name, out into the world, to witness in his name in order to offer the same that we've re been received of. Blessings in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, 
Now, if you have never ever received Jesus the Christ, I ask that you would pray this prayer with me. Or if you'd like to renew that commitment that you once made, but kind of fell short of, or if there's any, any doubt in your heart that you've not at all done what the Lord's been asking you to do, I ask that you would consider the words of this prayer as I pray. Father in heaven, I know that I am a sinner and need forgiveness. I believe that your son, Jesus, died to make amends for my sins. And I give you glory that he rose again for my salvation. Father, I need you in my life. Help me to turn completely away from my sinful ways and live a life that is pleasing to you. I want to have a relationship with you. So now I ask you, Father, to come into my life as my Lord and as my savior, cleanse me, heal me, and forgive me, I pray in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ, I pray, amen, amen. And now, if you have prayed that prayer, I would entreat you if you have not anyone at all, who is a Christian that you know to be a certain Christian, please do contact me at the South Hills Partnership, Reverend Diane Randolph, Reverend Dylan Parson, the senior pastor, or anyone at South Hills Partnership, the address and phone number that you can find online. Mm -hmm. Amen. Me too, me too. Savior wants to be, he 
said it was going to light. Glory to God. Most definitely love will lift you. Let us uh, join now in offertory prayer. Our offerings are taken on uh, line sometimes and we are also do receive offerings at our various churches at different addresses seen on our website. Please um, do accept this prayer for those offerings that have been already given and those that will be given. Let us pray. For earth, which you have molded, for creatures, and animals, plants, water, air, and fire. For Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. For the breath of life, we give you thanks, O God. Let these gifts be used for good wherever there is need. In the name of all that you have first given us, especially Christ Jesus, your Son, our Savior, Amen. And now I would that you all go in the blessing of the Holy Spirit, power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go. Amen. Amen. <laughs>